Welcome to the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. How are you today? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. Karis, I know so many people are going to identify with your message today and going to be drawn in by your gentle and compassionate personality. So I'm really excited to get right into things. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? I'd love to. So currently, um, my husband and four children and I live in Virginia, Northern Virginia, um, just south of D.C. Um, husband's in the military, so we have moved 12 times in 17 years, so kind of have a transitory lifestyle, but we've enjoyed it here so far. Um, I have had a variety of jobs over the years, um, did counseling for a while, but right now I'm mainly focused on raising my four kids. So they're ages two to 12. Um, and recently, just uh, in October, um, published a book. And so that was kind of the other main focus area for me. Um, so that's kind of in very short detail, kind of where I'm at right now. And the name of the book you just published is Suffering Redeemed, Finding Strength to Endure purpose and pain, and hope for tomorrow. So with a title like that and a subtitle like that, there's got to be a backstory. <laughs> yes, definitely is. Um, and it's, it's interesting because I never imagined myself publishing a book. I'd, I've never even thought of myself really as a writer. Um, but I... I was actually on my honeymoon where I started having some stomach issues and started losing weight. And then it just kind of went downhill from there. And several months later, I was diagnosed um, with some different parasites that I picked up visiting my sister in Pakistan um, a year before. And so it just, the type that I had, it was pretty severe and I had to go through lots of treatments got rid of them. So I was like, okay, did, got rid, you know, finished that thing. Now I'm going to move on with my life. But I never recovered from that. Um, I just, they had done quite a bit of internal damage. And then I started having different problems with organs, my heart and kidney and pancreas and um, in and out of the hospital several times. Um, the, actually, in the beginning, the doctors told us, because I also had um, a tumor on my pituitary gland, was kind of messing up a lot of my hormones. So they said I would never be able to have children. Um, and in, in conjunction with all my other health problems. Um, so we kind of, you know, settled that. Okay, God, we're, we'll just focus on other things, even though we both really wanted children. Um, but God, God, God did give us four miracles through, through all the health stuff. But yeah, it kind of brought me on this journey that I never, never expected. I'd always been very healthy, um, very athletic growing up, played soccer and track. Um, and then all of a sudden I was, you know, 20, 25 and in this body where just I couldn't, it wasn't functioning well. And it seemed like the, the trials, you know, just as we prayed for healing, things just continued to get worse and worse and worse. And it was just one thing after the other. Um, and so I would say probably about eight years into it, I kind of, I think for so long I had just been trying to kind of cope with it, to be strong on my own. Like, um, I, I never wanted to complain about it because I, I knew, I think growing up, I grew up as a missionary kid. So seeing so much of the world, um, in the, in the, in the suffering that mo many people endure, I thought, you know, mine my suffering isn't really that big. So I, I can just, you know, pull up my bootstraps and just, you know, try to, try to endure. But, um, it started wearing me down, not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally. I mean, it really affected every aspect of my life. And 
I got to a, po- a point where I was just very broken, um, very desperate, you know, desperate for God to to reveal more of himself to me. You know, I'd, I'd always had a relationship with the Lord um, because my parents, you know, raised us in a strong, a strong environment like that. But I think it was through a lot of these, you know, very desperate nights of affliction where I um, kind of was forced into this relationship where I, I had to be, I, I needed more. Like I, I, I grew a dependence upon the Lord um, and, and really just really humbled me too, to realize like, I, I don't have it all together. Like I think I do, you know, I don't, I can't put on this happy face like I've been doing for so many years because um, it, it, there's only so much that our flesh that our, um, um, without a strength from both from God, but also from others, you know, I need, I needed to learn how to receive help and to um, just reveal more of my weakness and struggle. So um, anyway, so it was, sorry. <laughs> So anyway, so he's back there. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, so it was, and then about five years ago, <laughs> in the middle of the night, God spoke to me quite clearly, saying, "Karis, you you need to start writing." And at that time, I was like, "God, what? What am I going to write about?" I, I felt so. I felt so just broken down at that point, and really didn't feel like I had any anything to offer other people, you know, let alone, um, the energy to write. And so, but I did a couple, after a couple of weeks of procrastinating, I just started writing like what God was teaching me, you know, just a lot of, um, soul struggles, a lot of questions that I was grappling with a lot of, um, the things that, that the Bible said in my own life and like seeing like, God, how is this measuring up? How is, your your word and the faith that we are supposed to have as Christians, how do we live that when our lives feel so completely um, different? Like it, it doesn't feel the the truth. Like the the circumstances of my life seem to override the truth a lot of the times. And so, just a lot of things that I just internally was struggling with. And then um, I started a Facebook group and then started a blog through that. Just kind of realizing, wow, God is really revealing a lot to me through this. And um, I could see glimpses of his grace and his purposes through the pain and and just how, you know, at the right time he would provide the hope or a word from someone else or encouragement in some way. Um, and so it was through a lot of that writing that I did that the book kind of was born, even though at the time I had no idea that what I was writing was going to be a book. Um, so. Yeah, that's kind of how it it came to be. You know, another person in your position experiencing what you were experiencing might have run away from their faith, might have lost their faith. What do you think was the difference for you that you embraced it? Mm. Oh, yeah. It wasn't, so I don't think, I think it's a continual thing that Um, and even today, it's not like I'm looking back and saying, I'm, I, you know, I'm over it now. It's still, you know, something my pastor, I remember as a kid, one of my pastors said that he, he prayed every day that God would give him faith to keep trusting, to keep believing God's goodness and, you know, to keep the faith. And I always thought that was so strange. I'm like, why do you have to, you know, like, it's so easy to believe in God, you know, once you, you accept it and but, you know, as I went through this, I realized, yes, like it, it takes a daily surrender of my own will. And really, that's what it is. It's continually, even today, like I have to surrender. Okay, God, this is not my will to be living like this, but I'm going to surrender to you and I'm going to keep living in faith that you have a bigger picture, that you have a bigger plan, that I can entrust myself and my body and everything that's going on, even though it makes no sense to me. Um, and so I think a lot of it is just having the humility um, to to entrust it to God, you know, and, and, and yeah, there's a lot of people I know who have turned away from God because they can't reconcile the suffering with this good God. Um, and 
And I, and I can understand that because I've been there. I've been in those desperate places where it feels like, you know, my, I can feel my heart kind of hardening. Like, I just, I don't know if I can turn back. I don't know if I can turn back to you, God, because I feel like you've forsaken me at times, even though when I look back and I recognize it, I'm like, no, he has, he has never forsaken me. I just, our feelings and our circumstances can make it, you know, make it seem like that at times. But, you know, I think it's, it's, it's a lot of things, but, but it comes down to God's grace and his pursuit of us when we are willing to, um, to turn back to him. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. And I think, you know, suffering gives us such tunnel vision. We can mm -hmm. only see down that narrow path and it's hard to see all the other goodness and all the other things all around us. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so true. I think, um, when we get so focused and I, I guess I speak from experience when I get so focused just to get out of my pain, because there's been times where I'm just, I, I feel like I'm obsessed. Like there's, you know, cause there's so many people who, who, when you're in a situation, they'll give, they'll offer suggestions like, have you tried this? Have you done this? Have you done this? Have you done this? You know, and out of the goodness of their heart, they're offering, you know, different solutions that maybe work for someone else that work for a friend or worked for a coworker. And, you know, and when you're down that trail of like trying everything possible, and it, I'm not saying there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, with, you know, trying supplements or diets or medications or whatever. But when that becomes the main thing, it, <laughs> you lose hope because when it doesn't work, then it's just the cycle of disappointment after disappointment after disappointment, you know, and, and that being the main thing versus, yeah, keeping your eyes on God and realizing that um, there may be things that um, he brings in to help for a while. But, but if our hope is in that specific you know, coming out of whatever we're in and it doesn't happen, then we will lose our faith because that is the, that becomes the idol. You know, that becomes the, the goal that we're living for. And I've, I've had to, I've definitely had to uh, repent of making health an idol um, because I just, I want it so bad. You know, I want, I want to be able to eat the things I want to again. I want to be able to do the things or feel the way I want to again. Um, and I, you know, I think God is a good God who wants to give us good gifts, of course, but, um, but they don't always, we don't always get them, um, in the way, in the time that we want. So. When are you at your worst? Um, mornings are usually the first couple hours in the morning are for me are usually pretty hard. Um, I have neuropathy, so I have a lot of, um, nerve. Uh, pain and and after sleeping, I often am quite in a lot of pain, and then also um, just a lot of digestive problems. But thankfully, I usually try to get up early and have that time spending with the Lord before the kids wake up, um, which I find to be so. I don't know how I would do it without without that time with the Lord first thing in the morning because it really gets me on the right track. You know, I really have to fight for joy and for faith. I feel like every day just, you know, to say, okay, God, it's a new day and your mercies are new every morning, <laughs> even though it's, you know, some mornings don't feel like it. Um, but he, he's, I just, I just have to, you know, I just always think, you know, he's just so faithful to get us through. Um, every time we turn to him, every time I turn to him, he is so faithful to respond. If we can shift gears for a moment, I would mm -hmm. love to hear about what it was like that first moment when you realized you were pregnant. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll never forget it. Um, I, I was so shocked. Uh, actually, a month beforehand, I had been reading in Joel where it talks about God. Um, Joel 2, where it talks about God leaving a blessing. When I read that verse, I immediately thought, I immediately came, the, the, the picture came to mind of, of, a, of a baby in my arms. And I was thinking, that is so strange. So a month later, when I found out I was pregnant, immediately that verse came to mind. And, you know, I didn't really 
Like, even though I kind of was like, well, maybe God's saying that we're having a baby. Um, I don't know if I really had faith at that point that that's what it was going to be. Um, but yeah, it was, it was so unexpected um, and, and such, but it was a huge blessing. And I will say that my children, even though they're a lot of work, and in some days I'm like, God, I don't know if I have the energy to keep up with these kids, <laughs> but they, they give me so much joy and, and even just like um, inspiration to keep going. You know, some days I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like getting out of bed, but I know my kids need me, you know, and they, um, and they, they're so, I think the thing I've struggled with most, I know this is not complete, like directly answer your question, but I've struggled the most with is how my illness is going to affect my children. You know, how them seeing me, you know, in and out of the hospital and their anxiety over, is mommy going to be okay? You know, and how, how, you know, they pray and pray and pray and pray for my healing and and my son came down the other, he, my 12 year old came down the other day and he was like, mom, I've been praying for two hours that God would heal you, you know? And he's like, do you feel better? And um, yeah, so my heart just breaks because I, I struggle like, Lord, are they going to um, be disappointed or like lose their faith because they don't see you answering their prayers, you know? But and I've, I've seen almost the opposite. I've almost seen like, how God has used this in their lives to grow compassion and love and just a sensitivity to other people who are suffering, you know, and, and um, I mean, of course, their kids are, they're selfish and whatever, but, but they also have this, you know, their, their eyes, I think are open to, to not just, you know, to, to realize that life is hard and that we need God, you know, to, to, that we, we have to keep turning back to him and things aren't easy, but that doesn't mean that we, go someplace else. You know, we, we keep going back to God. So yes, it was, um, I just see God's hand, um, in, in all these years, you know, it's been 18 years now. And yet I feel like every child, um, was just an, uh, another provision of his, um, of his grace and his blessing in our lives. So beautiful images in there. Thank you so much for that. How old are your kids? So yeah, we, I have a 12-year-old boy, his name's Benaya, and then a nine-year-old girl, Esther, six-year-old girl, Hannah, and a two-year-old who's Judah. Uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds for them. It <laughs> is a difficult path for them, for sure, but the way that you frame it for them, I think, will make all the difference. Mm. Thank you and for that encouragement. It. Yeah with faith and love and compassion, not just for them, but for others. I think that will have a lasting and profound effect on them mm -hmm. and the world will be a better place for it. <laughs> what do you want to accomplish with your book? Oh, so many people have asked me that question. And it's funny because I, I worked through a, a self-publishing school. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I just, I, I, I needed help, like getting an outline and trying to figure out what, you know, how to, how, what, what, what do I do? And so I, I signed up with this self-publishing school and, um, <laughs> and they, they did ask me that question. At first I was like, I just, I don't, I, I honestly felt like it, for me, it was an act of obedience. Like the Lord really put a lot of things on my heart. And then he kind of just brought me to this point where I felt like I should turn it into a book. And so I, I didn't realize while I was writing it that in order for people to read it, you have to like <laughs> put it out there for the world to see. And I'm not a huge, like I, I'm like marketing when they're talking about like marketing and like asking people to read it and review it. I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do any of that. I don't like, I don't like being in front of people, even like doing podcasts is a little bit outside my comfort zone. But, but I realized, you know, like a friend challenged me. She's like, you know, so many people have messages to share with the world that are, that are not full of hope, that are, that are even like, you know, just bad, you know, like, and, and, and how much more should you 
you know, if you have a story to tell that is hopeful and that you want to help people, be willing to, you know, get it out there for more people. And and so that really helped change my perspective some. And and um, so I just, you know, I've kind of just been going with with how God has been leading me and who he brings in my path um, to be able to share it with. So I don't have like a specific goal. I just my heart is that um, God would bring me to the people and bring the book to the people who who need it, at, you know, in their time. And I've you know I've had so many responses saying like this is exactly how I'm feeling. I just didn't know how to write it, you know, because like I said earlier, I didn't at the time. I I probably would have written a lot of things differently if I had known it was going to be going out to the world. And I. I, I think the vulnerability that I wrote was was quite raw and um, unpolished. You know, I think I I would have, yeah, I would have done things differently. But I think that's kind of what what makes it um, powerful is that I I wasn't trying to hide things, and I you know I'm 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 still in it. You know, I, I think it'd be a lot, lot easier if I had. I thought sometimes when I was, you know, earlier, the earlier years, like, oh, maybe it's like at this great healing, you know, I have such a great testimony to share, then I can, you know, I'll be excited to share it with other people and I can tell how good God is and what he's done. And, but it's different when the testimony is, you know, I'm still walking in it, but God is still good. Um, but that's where a lot of people are, right? I mean, that's where the reality um, is. And, we have to wait a lot longer than we want sometimes. Um, so, you know, the world has enough polished, filtered messages and people in it. I think we really need the raw, authentic, <laughs> authentic messages that really what our souls hunger for, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I would love to encourage you in. The Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, don't mm. put your life where it's hidden. Put mm. it in and shine it where the whole city can see it. And you have a light in you, a God-given light, and a light that God has asked you to share. So share it boldly. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thanks for that encouragement. That's a good reminder. Yeah, well, it's not me. <laughs> this, this word so <laughs> I went too well <laughs> yeah yeah um we are nearing the end of our time here I do want to give you an opportunity to uh to talk to that person listening to the podcast today that's hurting who's struggling mm. with their with their faith with their life with the choices that they have in front of them what encouragement mm. would you speak to that that beautiful soul? Yeah. Well, I think first of all is that the Psalms are such a rich place for us to relate to God. I think for many years, especially in the beginning, I I wanted my prayers. I was so afraid of like dishonoring God um, that I I wasn't completely honest, even though God knows our hearts already, but. The Psalms really provided a way for me to express the depth of my despair and anguish and confusion, but also give words of praise and hope and belief and faith. And so if if nothing else, learn how to connect with God um, through the psalmist. And um, and it's it really does like God. God is so faithful. Um, you know, he's always present. He's always waiting for us. And something I've been thinking about recently is how, you know, there's so many, the mystery that we are living in right now, the mystery, each of us, you know, that we don't understand, you know, like why God, when I'm praying for this, you give me this, you know, why, why do you allow this? Or, but I was, I was thinking how like in heaven, we won't, we won't have that mystery. This is our only opportunity to live and to exercise the faith that God wants from us and to live to live with the suffering because we'll have eternity to to know and to understand and to live with all the all the goodness that God has stored up for us but every moment right now we have um you know to not 
to not waste it. And um, I don't think God will allow any of our struggles or sufferings to be wasted when we offer it back to him. And so just take heart because God, you know, he's he's such a God of all the details and he doesn't miss it. Um, so you can entrust it to him. And folks, if this is resonating with you, if you're finding a connection here, click the link in the show notes to Karis's website and check out the Suffering Well blog. There are a lot of wonderful articles in there. Um, they do strike a chord of connection, and I think you'll be enriched by reading those. And check out the book, Suffering Redeemed, Finding Strength to Endure, Purpose in Pain, and Hope for Tomorrow. And then share it with someone else who may need it as well. Karis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.